weather forecast predicting just the odd light shower at Thruxton, it did in fact stay dry for all of the CMMCS sessions in 2023. Andy Woods Dean would only manage one lap in qualifying in this Holden Commodore, and Dave Avis sadly has suffered more gearbox issues. In the end, it would be Ronan Bradley fastest in his BMW E36, just edging out Rod Burley back in his Escort WRC. Marcus Bicknell would be in third in his V8 Ford Taurus NASCAR, followed by Dave Cowan in his BMW E46, Chris Bassett in the leading tin top car, the Peugeot 306, then came Jack Whitehead in his BMW M3, Alex Tidwell in his Holden Commodore. Like many of our drivers, Alex was experiencing traction for the very first time. Martin Scott was up next in his Volkswagen Golf, next followed by Alan Breck in the V8 Ford Capri, and then was Ken Angel in his tin top BMW. We also had Luke Bennett added into Class S in his Mercedes V8 X Euro car, with Woodstein unfortunately unable to take the start in his Hold'em. For 15 minutes of racing, which begins right now we go racing and it is the number 39 car with the inside line into the first corner the little Peugeot 306 trying to make headway earlier on Chris Bassett in the triple three car trying to go around the outside that didn't quite work for him but it did work for Tommy Field in the 28 car Tommy Field it is that leads the way from Nigel Mustel in second place Mustel looks like he's struggling to get the car uh, heated up in the early stages because around the outside has gone Chris Everill in the 169 Everill up to second place fourth place still for the little Darian Fifth place for Ronan Bradley, then it's Rod Burley in sixth position. There's Alex Sidwell's Holden Commodore VF, uh, still outside the top ten in the early stages of this race. V8 Thunder, V6 Power, turbos naturally aspirated, even rotary engines, just about every engine you can imagine taking to Thruxton in unison. But it is the Ford Escort RSR that leads the way. The Escort RSR, our race leader, a fabulous machine in the hands of Field, the 28. But here comes Nigel Mustel. He's starting to build the pace once again now. That car is known to be just as quick as a GT3 in the right hands. And Nigel Mustel in the big Volvo trying to go around the outside here. The rolling start would see the four quicker WRDA cars of Tommy Field, Nigel Mustel, Chris Everill and Ian Hall occupy the first four places. Meanwhile, an early scrap between Bradley and Burley was entertaining as Rod twice got past going into Woodham Hill, only for Ronan to come back under braking. This battle lasted until lap number six when a puff of smoke from the Escort going into Campbell signified a problem for Burley. He dived into the pit lane and it turned out that the power steering pump had fractured. After a quick check, he was allowed to continue, but at reduced pace. And it's a V8 clash of the Titans further back in the pack as well. It's Sidwell versus Bicknell. NASCAR versus V8 supercars further back in the pack. That is a battle uh, for, let's just check up on that. I believe it's outside the top 10 potentially. No, it's 8th and 9th. Sidwell and 8th and Bicknell down to P9. Meanwhile, Bradley had caught and passed Hall for third place overall, and Cowan was also on the move, quickly demoting Bicknell and chasing after Bradley. Bassett had been running in a strong sixth place overall until his car got stuck in fourth gear. Despite dropping down the field, he still would win the tin top group overall. They're coming towards the uh, Cobb Campbell section of the circuit, the first braking zone of the circuit right now. As we have a bit of a V8 scrap here as the uh, 126 car of Bennett comes surging through. Uh, that is the Eurocar V8 Mercedes C Class body shape on Luke Bennett's 126 car, surges past the Ford Capri. And as the race concluded, it would be the mighty Volvo that would win overall, but within the classic and modern, it would be Bradley winning the Super Saloons and Cowan it was next up, and he was also winning Class C, Bradley winning Class B. Next up would come Jack Whitehead, one of the many drivers not having experienced Thruxton before, but he got up to speed quickly and did a great job within Class. Next up would be Sidwell coming through the field to beat Bicknell for Class S honours. Marcus did win the Caesar Electrical Driver of the Race Award. It may be Marcus's last season of racing, but that enthusiasm still shone through after some great driving and some entertaining battles throughout the race. Bennett would be next up and come home in 10th place overall, followed by teammate Breck, who won Class A. 
Bassett was next, then came Scott winning Class D, then Ken Angel in T1 winning his class, and Burley would come home to finish in 17th place overall, but another important finish for the standings. It is Nigel Mustill in the number 39, Liquid Molly backed, Volvo S67 litre V8 thunders across the line to take the win. Second place will go to Sonny Field. He is a guest class entry. He will take the second place trophy. So let's go through the overall race within the WRDA. We had Nigel Mustill winning, then Tommy Field. Ronan Bradley, third place overall with the CMMCS. Great job from him. He was followed by Ian Hall, another WRDA driver. Then we had a lot more of the classic and modern drivers. We had Dave Cowan, Jack Whitehead, Alex Sidwell, Marcus Bicknell, then Wayne Spiller, Luke Bennett, Craig Attard, Mark Williams, Alan Breck, Chris Bassett. Martin Scott, Ken Angel, Rod Burley, Mike Cook and Verity Banks and a DNF for Chris Everill on lap number one unfortunately having issues early on in the race. Well, Marcus Bicknell, uh, Marcus Bicknell here as well in the NASCAR. I wonder if, in fact, let's go grab Rod Burley very quickly. Hopefully, we've still got time. Uh, in fact, we've got Dave. Let's grab Dave Cohen very quickly. Dave, I promise you I'd come get him. You're right, your face is as red as your car right now. Huh? It would be, yeah. I did tell you that. <laughs> now, you actually work for Caterham, yeah. don't you? But you're here racing with the Classic yeah, Water yeah. Motorsport Club. How did that come about? Uh, so, uh, I started racing with them uh, when it was the QMN, I think it was, yeah. like six or seven years ago. So, yeah, just just keep coming back and then obviously yeah tied in nicely with work so they were kind enough to give me the day off today so day off today yeah. but i understand you actually have to work tomorrow yeah though, and to probably tonight through. as well <laughs> <laughs> in fact in between races as well yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. to us. Uh, let's go and get ronan if we could just grab a quick word i think we've still got time i don't think the caterers have gone just yet very very quickly if we can grab Ronan, right very quickly just for uh, you disappear and, and everybody's got to get off on the caterers go how was it out there Fantastic. Yeah. Are oh, you going to say something else? No, 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 no. Not this time. Previously, maybe. No, over the moon. And thank you for your luck earlier because you said I'll see him on the podium. I did say that. And you said, I think you said no. I did me. say no. I did not dream in the world today with some of these big powered cars that um, we would, uh, the BM would bring it to them. But the front two were gone. I had a good battle at the start with Rod. Uh, I managed to knock him off out of the way a bit, kept behind me managed to close Ian down and got past him um, and just had to keep it on the black stuff to bring it home so over the moon well, as, I'm, as I'm responsible for this I better go on the podium for you then thank you well, very much. right so Caterham's heading out on track for race number two we were without the Volvo and the Darien but fortunately all of the classic and modern drivers would make it onto the grid for what was the last race of the day Jack Whitehead unfortunately had some issues on the formation lap meaning that would be a race restart a second attempt which would see Field lead the way disappearing off in the distance with Bradley slotting into second position ahead of the fast starting Sidwell. Cowan was next in fourth position and Bassett already making his way up into fifth position. Into Allard Curve for the beginning of this race. The clock starts to tick and the racing begins in earnest. It's a good start from Sidwell further back. He gets himself up into third place at the expense of uh, Cowan, Dave Cowan in the BMW E46. So Sidwell in the Aussie V8 is up to third but only briefly because Cowan managed to keep third place by going around the outside at Allard Curve. The big V8 was quicker to the first corner but Cowan was quicker around the first corner. The rather bizarre sight of Clio Cup car harassing a uh, NASCAR style stock car then as they go through uh, the first few corners for the first time. Everill making up good positions there. You just saw him streak past several cars, including the number 44. Uh, Rod Burley doesn't seem to be quite up to speed in the early stages, but the little escort is flying. Tommy Field goes through shot, well clear of the chasing pack, which is led by Ronan Bradley in the 78 car. Then it's Dave Cowan, Alex Sidwell looking to the inside at Church. He maybe has it in third place he should now have the power advantage it's a straight six versus a big five liter v8 and sure enough there goes the holden screaming past and should be almost challenging for second by the time they get to club not quite able to get around ronan bradley Everall soon powered through into second place from the back of the grid whilst burley was making up positions in his ford escort wrc Alex Sidwell passed Bradley on lap number four, but then he spun exiting Seagrave on lap number four. This would drop him behind Bassett, but he had enough time to still fight his way through the field. Alex Sidwell just managing to stave off the advances now of Everill, but how long can he do that for? 
this is the battle for second place. Cowan has something of a transponder issue, I believe, because he is still running out there, but it says he's in the pit lane. I promise you he's not. You can see him there in fifth place. Sidwell and Evriel getting a li little bit too close for comfort there. You see Alex Sidwell still lurking behind Ronan Bradley. A study in contrast, a purpose-built race car, two purpose-built race cars, one of them a touring car, one of them a GT, running side by side towards church and Evriel will get through and the next car he needs to try and overtake is a road car that's been converted for racing. Bradley there taking a wider line coming out of church, carrying more speed, but here comes the raw performance, that 6.2 litre Chevrolet V8. Evriel fires past, thunders past into P2. He's got a good set of brakes and a very good chassis underneath him as well. Meanwhile, Burley was having an entertaining battle with Bicknell, who got passed on lap number seven. Marcus was then caught and then passed by Bennett. Both big V8 cars thundering around Thruxton together was a great sight to behold. Here comes Sidwell for third place then. Ronan Bradley may have lost out this time. Sidwell will have bigger, more advanced brakes on his car, but it is a heavier car. Nonetheless, Sidwell looks like he's got it done. Can Ronan Bradley, I was going to say, can he get a good run out of the last corner and maybe challenge? Bradley would have another great race, taking his second win within the classic and modern with Cowan closely following him to the flag. Cowan would win his class, as would, of course, Bradley in the win of the overall race. Then would come Sidwell in Class S, just ahead of Bassett, who would be the tin top winner once more. Next up was Burley winning Class A, followed by Bennett and Bicknell. Luke would win the Driver of the Race Award for the second race here at Thruxton. Breck manhandled that Ford Capri around Thruxton to finish ahead of Scott winning Class D and Angel winning Class T1. Ken would complete our finishes but would have a good and entertaining battle with one of the WRDA drivers, Mike Cook, in a similar BMW. So let's, so let's have a look at the overall finishing order at Thruxton. It'll be Tommy Field winning the race ahead of Chris Everall, both drivers within the WRDA. Then it would be Rowan Bradley winning the CMMCS section ahead of Dave Cowan, Alex Sidwell, Chris Bassett, Rod Burley, Luke Bennett, Marcus Bicknell, Craig Attard, Mark Williams, Alan Breck, Martin Scott, Ken Angel, Mike Cook and Verity Banks. Unfortunately, some non-classified finishers here, Wayne Spiller and then Jack Whitehead with the issues and puncture early on. In the incredible Ford Escort RSR who comes around the final corner for the last time. It's Field that wins here at Thruxton. Bicknell just about stays on the lead lap there. He beat the car to the flag, I think, just. Uh, Field, nonetheless, taking a victory there in the 28 car. Great result for him. Everill now comes around the final corner and puts the throttle down in the big Chevy V8. Howard Janetta G55. He takes second place and Ronan Bradley will eventually come through for third place and a win in Class B in the CMMC Super Saloons. Here's one of the cars further down the order, the 45 um, Volkswagen Golf GTI Mark V in the hands of Martin Scott will cross the line. Just bring the camera with me uh, because I do want to show everybody a uh, particular banner uh, as well. I wonder if they can get them to lift it up for us over here. Look, there we go. Number 90, Dave Cohen. We spoke to him a little bit earlier, uh, but have a look. There it is. Uh, take that off as well. He's still red-faced as he was a little bit earlier. What do you make of this look? I oh, know, it's really good. I've never had this before in my life. I don't think I'll ever have it again, but it's really cool. Can we get a cheer for him? Yeah! And you're almost in it to podium. I know, yeah. I tried so hard, but just couldn't just couldn't get Ronan. Maybe a couple more laps might have got there, but yeah. That's the way it goes. Well, it? don't hang around too much because you've got to go back to work for Kairania. So, oh, well done. Congratulations. But we'll be back with another video very shortly. We'll be at Donington Park for the next round of the Classica Modern with the Intermarks Convoy in the park. That should be a fantastic event. And then after that, one week later, we'll be at Brands Hatch for the eventful pit stop race, which should be thrilling as always. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Classica Modern video as always, and we'll see you around soon. Goodbye.